Hello everybody, my name is Nicholas Powers with Aero Electronics and I want to share with you something I've been having a lot of fun with recently. Intel was nice enough to send me one of their Jewel kits. And this is a single board computer or a single board module that really helps you do some pretty advanced computing in a very small space. Now you can actually see I've got a lot of things here and I want to talk to you about how you get started with the Intel Jewel. Well, here I have on hand the 570X Developers Kit, which features a quad-core Atom processor running at 1.7 gigahertz. It has four gigabytes of RAM on board and 16 gigabytes of onboard EMMC memory. So you don't necessarily need an SD card. So this is great for computational tasks, but what if you wanna do more with graphics or video? What if you need to encode or decode video? Well, this little module actually has the Intel HD graphics built in, and it's strong enough to allow for 4K video capture, encoding, and display. So you can take in multiple cameras or even a single 4K camera, capture, encode, and display that, or analyze the video as needed. Wireless connectivity is served up by 802.11 AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.1. Along with this, there's a host of interfaces from USB-C to MIPI, CSI, and DSI for your camera and display, uh, so GPIO, SPI, and I2C, along with a few others. Now, there's also a 550X version, which is very similar and it features the same board, but it clocks the Atom processor at 1.5 gigahertz, drops the RAM to three gigabytes, and on the board is eight gigabytes of EMMC storage. So just a little bit of a reduced feature set in case you don't need all of the power of the 570X. Now, what is this meant for? What do you need all this power for? Well, pretty much anything that needs this kind of horsepower. It's excellent for machine vision, which is a popular one, especially with the camera interfaces. Intel is actually going to be pairing this up with one of their RealSense camera modules. So you can do 3D environment analysis. It's excellent for machine vision in the sense that if you want a robot to understand where it's going in a room or what it's seeing, what it's looking at, that's what makes this a really neat kit. It's got the extra horsepower to do that. And it's already built to handle those inputs. There's a lot of software built around it too to make it easy easy to do those things. Well, easy is relative when you get into the world of machine learning and machine vision, so you'll have to take my word for it that it is better than systems that don't come with the libraries you need, but that doesn't mean it's easy. Now, one of the issues with this specific kit is the comparison that it gets to something like the Raspberry Pi or the Arduino. This came out of Intel's Maker and Innovators group, so it's meant for the people that like to create and think and tinker but it is about $360 depending on where you're looking. It gets compared directly to the Raspberry Pi. This is a Pi 3 I have right here, and that's only $35. So what gets you to 10X the price? Well, I can tell you there's a heck of a lot more power within this board. You're dealing with a quad core board that has native 64-bit OS support, where the Raspberry Pi did just get a 64-bit OS, but it is still not a well understood enablement for the board. It is actually very hard to even do 1080p video input on the Raspberry Pi when trying to encode that to say H.264 or H.265, it's going to struggle. The Jewel on the other hand, no issues whatsoever. So now you've got the Jewel, you've got this incredible hardware, what does it come with and what do you need? Well it comes with a USB 3 to C cable and it comes with the actual module here, which you can see it's hidden underneath a heat sink right now. The silver part is the module. And you can see how, just how small this is for the amount of power you're getting out of it. The heat sink is included in the kit and recommended. It does tend to run a bit warm, but not obnoxiously warm. You can also see here, we've got a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antennas. These allow for your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to work, but they're connected via micro UFL connectors. So you can disconnect these and put on different antennas if you need to. I even made up a little um, 3D printed fan and shroud for it to keep it nice and cool so I don't have to worry about it. This isn't necessary, but it is recommended if you're gonna do computationally intensive tasks on the Jewel. So you've got the module and then you have this board here. This is actually the carrier board for it. You can actually see the module sits right in here between the two GPIO ports. And these GPIO ports give you access to a ton of things that you can use. There's this DC input jack. This was the one that kind of threw me for a loop. I had trouble finding the voltage input range, but at the end of the day, 12 volts, two and a half amps is what I'm using. They recommend a 12 volt, uh, two to three amp power supply. You've got a USB-C port, USB 3.1, micro USB, which also is your serial interface and then a micro HDMI port. 
The micro HDMI port is a standard port, but it's not usually one people have a cable for on hand. You can find cables for this on our website or various other ones. On the back of this board, you have a coin cell battery spot for keeping your real-time clock up and going, a micro SD card slot that can be used for data storage or for updating the firmware or adding a new operating system, and then a fan header there. That fan allows you to have a computer controlled fan that works with the module to keep it nice and cool when you're doing computationally intensive stuff. Now, besides what's in the box and needing the micro HDMI cable, you need the 12 volt uh, two amp power supply. I would recommend having a micro USB cable as well because one of the things this board does is it exposes a serial console over USB so you can interface completely with the dual module without having to have a display hooked up to it. Now, a few other things that you would want to get up and going, an SD card so you can load new operating systems onto the Jewel, a keyboard and mouse like I have here, I've just got a little wireless one. A USB hub is really useful because you only have the single USB 3.0 port on here. And other than that, you're good to go. So what can you do with this? Well, there are actually three different operating systems, or if you get more into it, there's four different operating systems you can use native on the Jewel. There is what is known as Ostro, which is based off of the Yocto Linux distribution. It changes the file structure and how it handles creating and installing software. There's also the Ubuntu Core and Ubuntu Snappy installation. So Ubuntu Core is the Ubuntu you're familiar with. Snappy is the one that is built for IoT devices that allows you a much lower overhead system so that you can actually get more done with less power usage. And then there's also Windows 10 IoT version, which enables you to run Windows apps on the Jewel in an IoT situation. I would say this is a great board that you can take to learn and then build off of because once you get done actually developing on the uh, carrier board that they have here, you pop off the module. Now underneath this, you can see the interface connections for the developer board. You've got your camera interface connections on the side and then various testing points. This layout is actually already available on the Gumsticks website to create your own board so you can design this directly onto your system after you're done developing with the developer kit board. And like I said, it's a lot more power than the Raspberry Pi, which is the unfortunate immediate comparison. Given the Raspberry Pi is wonderful, it can do a lot. It's not gonna do 4K video. It's not going to do machine learning very well. It's not gonna give you the power you need for possibly an industrial setting, but it does do well. Oh, and one of the other hiccups with the Raspberry Pi, it's really hard to get that Broadcom processor that's on it. So if you wanna design in a Raspberry Pi, a lot of times you're designing in the full Pi itself or one of the Pi computation modules but you are not likely to be able to develop that Broadcom chipset on your own board. Whereas the Atom processor, that is something you can actually get a hold of if you get to the quantities that are worthwhile. Otherwise, these single board modules actually help you get up and running very quickly, help you get to market and beat your competition there while doing some of the coolest stuff and the latest and greatest. So this has been the Intel Jewel getting started. I just walked through a little bit of what we have on hand and what you need. I'm going to be doing a lot more with this board, showing you how to get it up and running, how to get onto Wi-Fi, how to update the firmware, get Yocto or Ostro updated to the latest version, and then play with the other operating systems. So thank you for joining me today and look forward to the other content we have coming based around the Jewel and subscribe to our YouTube channel or join us at arrow.com.